Welcome back to another Michigan Fitness Foundation's Help Through Literacy Read Aloud. And today we are going to be reading a book called Fanny in the Kitchen by Deborah Hopkinson. But of course, before we get started, I have a couple of questions for you. So my first question for you is who here enjoys helping out in the kitchen? You can raise your hand, you can shout it out at home. Who here enjoys helping in the kitchen? I know I do. I loved helping my parents cook in the kitchen when I was a little kid and now I just like being in the kitchen. My husband and I like to help each other out. All right, question number two. What are some things you can do in the kitchen to help prepare a meal? Any guesses? Just shout them out. Yeah, you could set the table. Good. You could pour the beverages. Awesome. Yeah, you could help wash and chop the vegetables as long as you have an adult there to help you, right? You could even help clean up after you're done eating and cooking, right? Those are all really helpful things in the kitchen. Okay, question number three. Where can you learn how to prepare food? Any guesses? Yeah, by watching somebody, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a mom, a dad, a grandparent, a sister, a friend. There's so many different people you can watch to learn how to cook. Where else can you learn how to cook? Yeah, going to a cooking class, easy enough. What else? Yeah, you can look at cooking shows or television shows. Yeah, those are all great ways to help out and learn how to cook. Okay, let's see what this book is all about. First course, the soup. We meet Marsha. Marsha Shaw could do many things extremely well. She could make long, perfect candles, scrub clothes on the washboard until they were spotless, and polish the oil lamps till they shined. Mama is lucky to have a helper like me. Marcia decided. But one day, Mama announced, Girl named Fanny Farmer is coming here to live. She'll be my mother's helper. What about me? asked Marcia. I'm your helper. Yes, dear, said Mama. But with baby coming, I need someone to cook. Marcia scowled at Mama's big fancy stove. She didn't want a new baby or a girl named Fanny. She could only hope Fanny Farmer didn't know how to cook. Second course, a small success. But from the very first morning Fanny arrived, it was clear she did know how to cook. What delicious eggs, Mama said at breakfast. Papa chewed happily. And these biscuits so light and flaky. Marcia folded her arms. I won't eat, she decided. Then they'll be sorry they brought her here. Papa reached over and plucked a biscuit off her plate. Marcia, would you please ask Fanny if there are any more? As Marcia pushed open the kitchen door, toasty warm smells tickled her nose. Papa wants more biscuits, she said rudely. Coming up, Fanny replied pleasantly. Fanny plunked a wooden spoon into Marcia's hand. You can help. Just spoon the dough onto the pan while I check the fire. Make them nice and small, Fanny added. Small biscuits are more dainty, don't you think? Marcia stood still. Why should she help? Still, it did look rather fun. Later, when Marcia brought out her basket of steaming biscuits, she couldn't resist saying, I made them. After breakfast, Marcia snuck a biscuit and popped it into her mouth. It was small, light, and flaky. Just delicious. Third course, the griddle cake mistake. Fanny was making griddle cakes golden brown and steaming hot as Marcia watched. The biggest mistake with griddle cakes, said Fanny, waving her turner, is to flip them at the wrong time. When is the right time? asked Marcia. Look at this one, Fanny instructed. Is it puffed? Marcia looked closely. It's puffed. Is it full of bubbles? Marcia nodded. Little bubbles were popping up all over. Then now is precisely the right time. 
With one sweep, Fanny flipped the cake in the air and neatly back onto the griddle. Let me try. Marcia grabbed the turner. I don't need help. I was watching. Fanny raised an eyebrow. Fine, I'll have a cup of tea. Marcia clutched the turner. She checked to see if Fanny was looking, but Fanny was curled up with the newspaper cozy as the cat at her feet. Marcia flipped the first cake too early. It came out mushy in the middle. She flipped the second cake too late. It was already completely black on the edges. Then Marcia flipped the third griddle cake, just when it was puffed and full of bubbles. She flipped it right onto the cat. Well, you did flip it at the right time, Fanny said. Precisely the right time. Fourth course, the egg disaster. When baby was born, Marcia wanted to bake a special cake for mama, all by herself. After all, how hard could it be? Marcia put on Fanny's best apron. She measured flour, then beat the butter and sugar till they were light and fluffy. I'm baking a cake. I can do this extremely well, she said to herself. But when Marcia cracked the first egg into the bowl, pieces of shell fell into the batter. Even more shell dropped in when she cracked the second egg. And on the third, the most awful, the most horrid, the most odious smell filled the kitchen. Fanny walked in and grabbed her nose. Oh, a rotten egg. Marcia looked at her ruined cake. Tears filled her eyes. But Fanny just waved a hand in the air. Everyone finds rotten eggs sometimes. Next time, try this. She held up an egg. First, hold it in front of a candle flame in a dark room. The center should look clear. Second, place it in a basin of cold water. It should sink. Third, place the large end to your cheek. A warmth should be felt. And so Marcia learned the three ways to determine the freshness of eggs. Thank you, Fanny, she said. Now could you help me bake a cake? Fifth course, an excellent idea. After baby came, all Mama wanted to do was play with him. Marcia found this disgusting, so she began to spend more time with Fanny in the kitchen. Marcia liked the kitchen. Mysterious spices scented the air, and copper pans gleamed above her head like autumn moons. And Marcia decided that, after all, she liked Fanny. Fanny seemed like a magician who could make mashed potatoes fluffier than clouds and blueberry pies sweeter than a summer sky. Cookery is magic, declared Marcia one day, crunching a hot ginger snap. Fanny shook her head. Preparing food well isn't magic. It's an art and a science that anyone can learn. Anyone but me, Marcia grumbled. There's too much to remember. At least you have it all in your head. I do have a lot in my head, Fanny said thoughtfully. But Marcia, what if I wrote out precise instructions for you? Then you could cook exactly as I do. Will you explain everything? Asked Marcia excitedly. How to mix a fancy cake, make a pot of soup, even measure a cup of flour? Everything, Fanny promised. Fanny got a huge notebook and began right away. She explained how to measure a spoonful of salt so that it's exactly level and how to choose the ripest melons in the market. She even wrote directions for three ways to determine the freshness of eggs. Word of Fanny's notebook began to spread. Marcia's mother consulted it to make the special sauce Papa loved so much. Neighbors dropped in to borrow this recipe or that or to ask Fanny's advice. Best of all, the notebook made cooking much easier for Marcia. Fanny, if I can learn to cook using your book, anyone can, Marcia said. Why, I believe you could teach the whole town of Boston to cook. What an excellent idea, said Fanny. Maybe I'll try. Sixth course, Marcia Shaw, Master Chef. And so Fanny decided to become a cooking teacher at the Boston Cooking School. Marcia was sad to see her go, but she was sure Fanny would be the best teacher there. Before Fanny left, Marcia wanted to bake her a special cake. She knew just what to do. In Fanny's cookery notebook, Marcia found the recipe for golden cake. She read it carefully. She measured, mixed, and combined. Then she put the cake in the oven and baked it just until it was done. You made this by yourself, asked Mama in surprise. So tasty, Papa said with his mouth full. Even Baby got a big piece. Fanny took a bite and chewed slowly. Marcia held her breath. Marcia Shaw, you can do many things extremely well, Fanny announced at last. You can bake small dainty biscuits, always spot a rotten egg, and flip griddle cakes at precisely the right time. Fanny paused. You can also bake an excellent cake. Marcia laughed and picked up her fork. She took a bite of cake. Just delicious. Sixth course, the nuts. More about Fanny Farmer. 
Some people say Fannie Merritt Farmer invented the modern recipe. She was one of the first to publish a book with exact instructions for measuring and cooking. Fannie's Boston Cooking School Cookbook, often called the Fannie Farmer Cookbook, is over 100 years old, but it's so popular people still know and use it. Less is known about the real Fanny. She was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1857. At about age 16, she became ill with polio or had a mild stroke that left her with a limp in the left leg. Fanny became a mother's helper in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Shaw. It seems it was there while teaching young Marcia that Fanny realized how much easier cooking would be if ingredients were measured precisely for every recipe. Fanny went on to be a teacher at the Boston Cooking School and later was named its principal. After her cookbook was published in 1896, she became known all over the country. Throughout her life, Fanny had a special interest in teaching people about nutrition and health. She died in 1915. Remember, if you follow Fanny's instructions exactly, you can make griddle cakes, we call them pancakes now, for your whole family, and you will know how to flip them at precisely the right time. The end. That was such a cute book, don't you think? All right, well, before I let you go for the day, I have just a few more questions for you. So my first question for you. So in the book, we saw them making a lot of different foods and cooking a lot of different types of foods and a lot of it, right? Now, how can you tell how much is a serving size? Does anybody have a guess? By looking at it? <laughs> That's a good guess. Can we think of another thing? Yeah, okay, so you could read the packaging and look at those the label on the nutrition, right? Good, you could also look at the recipe, right? Exactly, that way you can learn how many people the food is supposed to serve and therefore figure out how much of that food is one serving size, right? Okay, <clears throat> question number two. Why do you think it's important to be aware of serving sizes? Does anybody have a guess? Yeah, okay, so to make sure you're getting the right amount of food from each of the different food groups, what else? Yeah, to balance your intake of food that you eat with the energy that you use. Okay. Question number three. So we know that it's important to balance your daily activities with your daily energy intake or the food that you eat, right? So what are some of the benefits to getting some regular physical activity in each day? Does anybody have a guess? Okay, yeah. So it helps your body be stronger and healthier. Good, anything else? Yeah, gives you more energy. Any other guesses? Yeah, helps you get enough sleep, right? A restful sleep. All right, well, those are all the questions that I have for you today. So I will see you next time. Bye. All right, so for your healthy snack challenge for today, I want you to try and find a whole grain waffle or whole grain pancake or whole grain toast, whole grain cereal and top it with some fruit, okay? It's absolutely delicious and you may be surprised because you don't know if you like something until you try it. You can also top it with some peanut butter, some yogurt, applesauce. The possibilities are endless. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.